For three years, the University of Missouri football program has been under construction. A master plan was plotted. The chief architect was selected, Larry Smith, a seasoned and respected football coach who had drawn the plans for previous major college rebuilding projects. His first two years at MU were spent laying the foundation, one that would provide sure footing for the development of a winning atmosphere, one meshed together with solid building blocks like attitude, belief, unity, determination. Then came year number three, a 1996 season that saw this project leave the ground floor and take a giant leap forward. Jones, the quarterback, option left, pitches it. West has it, gets upfield to the 30, 25, 20. He may go, cuts inside, five, touchdown, Mizzou. Steps up, fires over the middle. He's got James out of the backfield, 15, 10, five, touchdown, Mizzou. Alfred looks, throws over the middle. It's picked off by Missouri. Harold Piercy takes it in for a touchdown. Option look, Corby Jones. He'll keep Corby Jones open field. He will go the distance. Touchdown, Tigers. No longer is the plan perceived as moving forward simply with intangibles. The evidence is now on the field. The signs are up for all to see. For MU fans, progress as promised. For MU foes, a warning. Construction zone nearing completion. Clearly, this is a team on the rise. The 1996 Tigers hurtled their way through the first half of the season with some inconsistencies, yet showed signs of promise. The first came with a convincing 38-24 victory over the highly respected Clemson Tigers at Faroe Field. Two weeks later, the Tigers showed their medal on the road, rising to the occasion in a tight, intense game and pulling out a 27-26 victory over SMU. But it was in the final five games of the season that Mizzou really started clicking. Quarterback Corby Jones dazzled the Missouri homecoming crowd with a 193-yard rushing performance against Oklahoma State, the most ever by a Tiger QB. He led the Tigers to a 28-28 stalemate against the Cowboys. And then came Chapter 1 of the Mizzou Overtime Magic. And off for Oliva running the left side to the five, breaks a tackle, touchdown Missouri! Hey, 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 that's what the Tigers needed. This is the ball game. Fourth and goal from the four. Tigers trying to win an OT. Straight drop, look, rainbow sideline. Oh, Tigers win! It's incomplete! Overtime win! Tigers win! Oh, baby, how about that? Despite losses to top 10 teams, Colorado and Nebraska, the Tigers were poised to pounce on their final two 1996 opponents and finish the season strong. It wasn't merely the fact that the Tigers notched back-to-back -back victories. It was the way they did it. Rolling to the right side, looking, now turns back, throws for the left, open Olivo in the end zone, touchdown Missouri! First play! We're in double overtime, hands off, Blackwell dives into the end zone, touchdown Missouri. Hand off to Devin, running the left side, breaks a tackle with the 10-5, touchdown Missouri! Fourth and 10, play action fake with pressure, rolls out, running to the left side, looking downfield, gets a block, steps up, throws into the end zone, incomplete! Missouri wins for the second time this year in overtime! This time it took three, but the Tigers prevail 49 to 42. The thrilling road victory over Baylor won't soon be forgotten. It may very well be the game that the Tigers someday point to as the one that pushed the Smith era over the hump. I don't think there's any question that that, that would go down uh, as a, one of the real benchmarks or part, big part of the foundation that we laid this year. I think that uh, the kind of game it was, uh, really playing an excellent football game for about two, two and a half quarters, then losing a big lead and uh, looking uh, defeat in the right in the eye and then coming back in a triple overtime and, and refusing to, to lose and refusing to die and finding a way to win again. And uh, it was a great team victory in all fronts. The following week, the season finale against the rival Jayhawks of Kansas. What transpired was the most complete game in Larry Smith's three years at Mizzou. 60 minutes of the Tigers' brand of football. Quite simply, they rammed it down the Jayhawks' throat. Corby Jones breaks a tackle. He's still going, Corby Jones. He could go the distance. Look at this. Touchdown, Missouri. Right back at you. 
here come the Tigers. Option. Oliva with James in front. He'll get in. Touchdown. Strong left formation. They run that direction. Up and over the top for the touchdown. Brock Olivo is third of the afternoon. Missouri rocked the Hawks with equal doses of Corby Jones and Brock Olivo, both of whom ran wild behind a dominating performance from the offensive line. Just looking at the defensive line's eyes, and you could see that, man, they didn't want to be here, and it was just the greatest feeling in the world that, you know, man, we're beating KU's butt. The MU defense, meanwhile, harassed the Jayhawks all day and produced five sacks, all by players who will return in 1997. In the end, it was a giant-sized 42-25 Tiger victory. I haven't stopped smiling since that day. That was the best time I've ever had here at Missouri. And just talking to my teammates, best time they've ever had since they've been here, too. So, you know, that's your dream, you know. Not only beat KU, but we, we took a big step in our program. You know, hopefully that'll carry over until next season. But I'll keep smiling about that all year, all my life, really. I think it was great to see uh, uh, the enthusiasm, the joy, and the celebration by our, our fans, and in particular our students, because uh, that's a big thing for the students. And uh, they were able to really share and enjoy in that victory, not only just being there, but coming away from the game, not only with the memory of the game and, and the fact that they were there, but a piece of the game, too, you might say. The victory over Kansas capped a brilliant second half of the season and gave Mizzou its first five-win season since 1987. It also pushed the Tigers past KU into fourth place in the Big 12 North with three league wins. But most importantly, this season-ending flurry injected a major boost to Smith's building project. We found ways to win in the last half of the season, which was supposedly the toughest five games on our schedule in a row. Uh, we were three and two. I think our football team developed confidence in each other, in themselves. I think they developed some confidence in our our run offense, our run defense. I think that uh, developed confidence in that uh, we were becoming a good football team. We blocked, we tackled, we practiced well, we prepared well, and we played hard in the games. And when you do all those things, then good things will happen, which then you can turn those things into victories. We had a lot of faith in everybody out there, and each guy, each guy believed in the guy next to him, believed that the guy next to him was gonna get it done. And uh, I think that made the difference. While Smith's building project showed progress on the field, the university displayed its commitment by unveiling building plans for several facility projects. Construction is underway on a $12 million renovation of Memorial Stadium. Missouri fans will enjoy major improvements in 1997 in restrooms, concession stands, and ticket booths, in addition to a new entry plaza and upgraded parking lots. By 1998, a massive expansion of the Taylor Brookfield Athletic Complex will be completed along with the construction of the Dan Devine Pavilion, a first-class indoor practice facility. It's all part of Missouri's vision to make the athletics facilities among the best in the nation. In 1997, the Missouri Tigers will aim to capitalize on their progress from 96 and take it to the next level. A collective confidence and excitement prevails among players and coaches. And because they have now seen results on the field, there's a belief that it can and will happen. We got the winning attitude back. And uh, the attitude was, uh, hey, we're just going to go out here and compete. Well, we've passed the point of competing. We're time to win. And uh, a lot of people saw progress through, uh, through the practice and uh, not on the schedule, though. We wins and losses make progress. And uh, that's what we definitely got uh, across this year. You hear a lot of verbalization uh, every year, renewed enthusiasm, optimism, all that type of thing. But there's a difference when they really believe it. And, and I think this, this uh, football team, the 97 football team, uh, we've got a number of, of young men that have been with us now going on. Uh, this is their third year. Next year will be their fourth year. We've got quite a few that uh, are going into their uh, third year and quite a few going into their second year. So we've really built up some maturity in terms of the program itself. And part of that maturity is a belief in what we're doing. The tools to complete the construction and reach the goals are now better than ever in the Smith era as his first recruiting class enters its senior year. The offense will center around a ferocious running attack that averaged 250 yards per game in 96, ninth best in the entire nation. For the first time in MU history, 
four players gained over 500 yards rushing during the season, and all four returned. Rather than featuring one running back, the Tigers battered defenses by unleashing a combination of Brock Olivo, Devin West, and Ernest Blackwell. The fourth 500-yard rusher, and possibly the most dangerous weapon, is quarterback Corby Jones. This honorable mention all Big 12 performer electrified MU crowds with his hard to cover option ability. He will easily become the top rushing quarterback in Tiger history during this, his junior year. But it all starts up front and the Tigers will feature an offensive line that was a huge part of the 1996 offensive success. Starting tackles Todd Niemeyer and Travis Beeble and starting guards Mike Morris and Rob Reedy all return in 97. I think our offense took a big step in 96, which is really the number one building stone to work on uh, for 97. 95% of our offensive line are all returning. And uh, when you look at that from a scoring standpoint, when you look at it from moving the ball standpoint, uh, there's a lot there. I mean, it's more than the foundation. There's a makings of, of having a lot of fun on offense here in the, in the next year. Defensively, the Tigers return their entire front line of Donnell Jones, Justin Wyatt, Jeff Marriott, and third-team All-Big 12 tackle, Brian Craycraft. The black attack defense will also feature hard-hitting linebackers, Kevin Ford and Barry Odom, and the secondary, anchored by a big play safety, Paul Grunoff Easter. It's an attacking fly-to-the-ball defense that is beginning to play the Larry Smith way. These Tigers are eager to insert the next building block and are very clear about their goals for 1997. Our goal is next year to go have a winning record and go to a bowl. And next year, I think it's a big year for us. You know, we, uh, we have a uh, five and six record this year. Next year, we're trying to improve that. And the thing's gonna be, you know, our team, we're getting stronger and faster. We're working out during the off season. And it'll be a great thing for us if we can come out and do those things. Thoughts to have a winning record and go to a bowl. That's, what, that's what's on my mind right now. I think we have, we have the strengths on our team to do that. There are going to be great expectations. I mean, we know what we can do when we play ball together. And uh, we've got, of course, we, we want to go to that bowl game. We want to finish, you know, with a winning record and stuff. So we've got, we've got a lot to shoot for. The players have made a commitment. And for me as a coach, I want to see them get the reward, which the reward for commitment and hard work and sacrifice is winning, winning games, uh, winning seasons and uh, the opportunity to play in bowl games. With the definitive progress seen in 96, the exciting new look of Thoreau Field, and a home schedule that includes Ohio State, Texas, and Nebraska, 1997 promises to be one that Missouri fans won't want to miss. The Tigers have made a commitment. That commitment is starting to pay dividends. The project isn't complete. There is more work to be done. But the architect has been hard at work. He knows how to do it. And now entering his fourth season at Mizzou, Larry Smith has a team of players who have seen the progress and want to continue building MU football back to prominence. I mean, people got excited when Coach Smith was coming in. And I think in the last three years, I've seen a huge difference in the attitude of players. And I mean, I think now, I mean, the sky's the limit. I think everybody knows that we can accomplish anything based on our performance in the last two games. And now we just got to go out and do that, you know, every single week. It's like night and day. Uh, three years ago, uh, if, if we'd even made it into overtime with Baylor or Oklahoma State, we'd have probably just crawled in the hole, you know. But this year, it's a different attitude, you know. Uh, this past year was a different attitude. The players, uh, every, everybody's kind of adopted this, uh, this never-die attitude and this, uh, you know, win-at-all-costs attitude. And that's what it's about. Um, and that's the bottom line. And Coach Smith brought that here, you know. Him and his coaching staff brought that here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great feeling walking on a field, uh, expecting to win, knowing you're going to win. You can see the attitude of the coaches around here. You can see the attitude of the players around here. Nobody's scared to go out and play. Um, there's no fear of, of anyone in this conference and uh, we have that confidence that we can just play anybody in the nation right now and uh, we're definitely showing people that we can play with anybody in the nation. The project is on an upward spiral and now these Tigers are ready to soar through the roof. They are a team on the rise.
the 25, breaks a couple of tackles, and look at him go! He could go all the way! Touchdown!
Do you hear what I'm saying, babe? 